All right, back now to Montreal and the Liberal Cabinet retreat. A big announcement this morning from the government. Ottawa has unveiled a cap on the number of international students allowed into Canada. CTV's Colton Prail is standing by with more details for us. Colton, good morning to you. So we heard from the immigration minister less than an hour ago making this announcement about foreign students. What is the government proposing and why? Well, it's a significant cap. It's two years, and what this was result in, at least this year, is the country only taking in about 364,000 international student permits. These are new applications, not those already in the country. But going forward, we could see that number drop. And depending on where you are in the country, that could drop very significantly. I'll touch on that in a second. But the basics of the way this works is the federal government is placing this cap and allowing each individual province, depending on the size of their population, to allot a certain number of international student permits, new student permits. This won't apply uh, to postgraduate programs. It won't apply to elementary or secondary school applications. It's particularly targeting those private public college applications, private public partnerships that have been a really significant issue, especially in the GTA. The way this works is you usually have a public secondary institution like a college, typically outside of the GTA. GTA, who admits these students but then sends them to a private institution, usually in the GTA, but they exist all over Ontario, who then uses the same curriculum as the public school. The problem is there's no way to oversee that teaching process, and so a lot of the times these students aren't getting the education they pay for. The college makes a little bit of money by admitting the students. It increases pressure on housing because all of a sudden you have an influx of international students. Some housing experts say it could be 2-3% per year for certain cities, and so the federal government says they're challenging the integrity of the system, the integrity of the higher education system. They're taking what they say is really a blunt tool, and they're, over the next two years, they're trying to rein in these numbers of new applications. Over the last three, we've had more than a million international students come in on these applications. So for 2024, we're looking at about 364,000. We don't know what that number is going to be for 2025 or 2026. They say they'll reassess at the end of this year and come up with a new number. But if you're in a province like Ontario, where the vast majority of these students come to, you could see a 50% drop in new applications. It's also going to have a significant impact in the Atlantic provinces, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia and in BC as well. Okay, big announcement to start the day on day two of this retreat. We also just heard from Melanie Jolie uh, very briefly. Can you tell us, Colton, what else is on the agenda today? The big focus is domestic issues, housing, affordability. How are they going to tackle these pocketbook issues that are affecting so many Canadians? We know there's a panel of experts who are going to be speaking on housing later on today. We heard from them. Uh, a big focus from that actually was capping the number of non-permanent residents who are coming in. Obviously, this action from the government is a start. It's not an entire cap, but it is a start on the number of those people who are coming in. Uh, there's going to be a focus on supply, on building more housing, what the government needs needs to look at how it can tackle these problems and offer new solutions. A large part of the criticism that they received after PEI, the last cabinet retreat in the fall, was that they didn't have new solutions. They didn't have new announcements. Well, we're seeing new announcements this morning. We're seeing them start to tackle these issues. And even though the Minister of Immigration framed this not as a housing solution, but a higher education solution, it is expected to have an impact on housing. It is expected to have an impact particularly on rent prices in some of these cities where there are large influxes of non-permanent residents of temporary students. Uh, but that's really the focus today. Tomorrow, we're talking U.S.-Canada relations, trade, and the potential for a Trump presidency. What's that going to mean? We'll hear from the Canadian ambassador to the U.S., a number of other experts as well, former ambassador to the United, uh, United Nations, and, and get their input on how relations could change and what it could mean uh, for all the new economic intertanglement between these two countries uh, when it comes to batteries, aviations, really uh, critical minerals. You know, all of these have become much more intertwined since Trump's last presidency. How would that impact Canada? How would it impact the states going forward if he was to return to office? Colton Prail for us. Colton, thanks for all that. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later.